Hi, welcome back to my frog build. Um, this is step 19 and configuration of the TBLE02S speed control that's included with the kit. So step 19 requires you to have your speed control and this little trapezoidal shaped part along with your receiver and you need um, a couple of these screws and a couple of these screws. So the instructions say, as you can see here, to use some double-sided thermal resistant tape um, to affix the speed control unit to the steering servo. So I'd recommend facing the steering servo in this direction. As you can see, mine's a Futaba S3003, and I've turned the speed control so that the majority of the wires are going to face to the back. Um, you get the uh, good pair of scissors and cut a nice sharp edge on the um, double-sided tape and you want to make it that it's just shy of the width of the servo body. Um, so what I did was is I aligned it up so that if you look at it carefully you can see that this one had uh, a crease in the plastic where it was molded or where it was put together so I put it on the edge of that crease which gave all of that rollover edge a breathing room and I took an exacto knife and I cut a tiny little notch in the tape not all the way through the foam but just in the top part so I knew where to cut and then I cut an edge um, and that gave me a piece that was just slightly shorter than the width of my servo and then I put the servo uh, standing up straight like so and I put the speed control up against it and I did that on the table so that the bottoms were flush with each other and I also ensured that this front edge was flush because of the way that this mounts into the car I believe that those two things are going to be the most important and then you just push them together so a little word about the speed control it's a bit of an odd duck um, on the Tamayo website it states that um, it comes with the sensor control it does not. Um, here are some specifications on the speed control from the Tamiya website. Um, it says it does forward, reverse, and braking, and that you can disable the reverse function. And if you're wondering why you might want to do that, uh, there are apparently a number of racetracks that require that reverse is disabled in order for you to race. Um, it will allow up to 7.2 volts, so if you're considering an 8.4 volt battery, it will not work with the speed control, so don't try. Uh, maximum continuous current is 60 amps, and um, its weight is 50.8 grams. Um, it has overheat, overload, and low voltage protection, although it does not work with LiPo batteries. I've read that it does not do that, and if you're going to be using LiPo batteries, I would highly recommend that you do not use the speed control. Here's the real kicker, is the compatible motors are the TBLM series that are censored, the Sport Tune brushed motors, five, size 540 and over, 25 turns. So when you configure up your wires, all right. Um, you can see that in brushless mode, you'll use all three motor leads and a um, sensor wire, which it claims to be included, and it is not. Um, or you are you going to use a brushed motor, like what comes with the kit? You do not use the orange lead, and you do not need to use a sensor wire, which is probably why they don't include it in the kit. So if you're going to use a brushless motor, um, this is probably the best choice given the chassis and the speed control design. Um, this is the 15.5 turn brushless motor, the TBLM 02S, and here's the item number. Um, you can see it's currently out of stock. Um, they're fairly brand new, um, and uh, it's finding that not a lot of places have them. However, Tower Hobbies does have it in stock, and you can see that it is $117, not counting the wire. Okay, so um, you also need the wire, and you can see that this is the one that I personally would go with if I was going to go this route because it's a little bit longer, it allows you some flexibility on where you um, can reach everything. However, uh, there are different lengths available, so you can custom choose the length that will best suit your configuration. Um, if you don't want to go the brushless route and pay another $120, um, which I don't blame you for this car, I certainly would not go brushless. Um, you can go with the slightly upgraded 540 motor called the Sport Tuned. Um, I find this is a, a really great motor for these vintage chassis. Um, and they're very inexpensive. You can generally get these for under 20 bucks at just about any place. And it will give you uh, better performance, uh, I think noticeably better performance um, than what the stock 540 that comes with the kit will give you. 
If that's still not enough for you, um, or you want to have a little bit more feature-rich motor, because that motor is essentially run it till it's done and then you buy a new one, um, for roughly twice the money you can get this dirt-tuned motor, which um, has the advantage of a slightly better design for cooling the motor, as well as because the back end here is also acts as a heat sink and one of the the really nice things about it is you can replace the brushes which are the part of the motor that burns out um, the quickest they'll get cracked or they'll um, they'll wear unevenly you'll get bad connections and stuff like that so this motor you can disassemble and you can do a little bit of work on which should greatly increase its life oops um, and if that motor is not good enough for you then you could go with the GT tuned um, the GT tune is the highest performance brushed motor that Tamiya makes um, and uh, you can use this it's it's really geared towards as you can see on-road touring cars it's not really designed for buggies however you could certainly use it for buggies uh, you'll sacrifice some acceleration for top end with this motor so let's get on with uh, configuring the speed control so the frog kit comes packaged with the new Tamiya TBLE 02S electronic speed control or ESC. The S in the model number indicates that it is a censored speed control. So the very top part here gives some specifications about the speed control. But the thing that's important to note is that it's compatible with motors in the TBLM 01S series of Tamiya brushless motors that are censored. Um, and there are about three motors that fit this criteria. It's also compatible with the Sport Tune motor, which is the one that I happen to be using um, in my frog build. And it's compatible with brush motors over 25 turns, which includes the, the stock Silver Can 540 motor, which is a 27 turn brushed motor. So this speed control will work with both the stock motor and the Sport Tune, as well as some other. Um, brushed motors, but you have to configure it for that. Some of the other things to make note of are this caution statement. First of all is that the speed control is not waterproof. So if this gets wet, it's probably going to get ruined. So you certainly can't use it in a boat, but it came with a car kit. So if you drive it in the rain or through puddles, there's a possibility that you could damage the speed control. Also, it says never connect to a brushed motor when the speed control is in brushless mode and vice versa as it may damage the speed control. So this is where part of the problem is, is these speed controls are coming configured in brushless mode with a brushed motor. Now, um, even if you carefully read these instructions, as you'll see in a minute, they're fairly confusing because of the bad translation from the Japanese. Um, but a lot of people aren't going to read the instructions at all. They're just going to slap their car together. They're going to connect the wires up. They're going to see where it goes. And they're probably damaging their speed controls. <clears throat> My guess is Tamiya is getting a lot of uh, warranty claims um, because the speed controls are damaged and it's due to the fact that people are connecting them up. It's just a guess, but it seems pretty plausible. All right, so the picture down here below shows you how to connect the speed control up. Now, if you have a brushless motor, which you'd have to buy separately, um, you'd use all three wires and there's a good chance that they'll match up. However, if you're going to use the the stock motor that comes with it, or another one of the brushed motors which are more attuned with this vintage chassis, um, you don't use the orange connection. So the orange connection is unused, and you'd connect the blue wire up to the negative, which on this would be the green, so blue to green on the stock motor because you see there's a bare um, connection here. Or if you're going to use a sport tuned like I will be, um, the blue wire would connect up to the black because black is negative on this as there's no um, wire cover on that's a bigger connection. All right, so that's how you connect it up. All right, so it also states all right, that the speed control is not equipped with a cooling fan as you can obviously see there's no cooling fan. However, there are notches in the edge to allow a cooling fan to be attached. Again, optional accessory you have to spend more money for. If it's paired with the TBLM 01S motor of 10.5 or lower, okay, because I think they have an 8 or a 7.5 as well, what's going to happen is, is that hot motor is going to um, 
overexert your speed control. This little heat sink is not going to be enough to dissipate the heat, and it's going to shut your car down due to overheating. So if if you're going to run this speed control with the 10.5T or hotter motor, a brushless style, um, they recommend changing the gear ratio down to a 9.1, a 9 to 1 ratio um, on this car, or buying the extra fan. Right? However, um, when you connect this up to the servo as per the instructions, there is no room at all in this chassis for the fan on this. So you'd have to mount this speed control, which is what I'm considering doing, is mounting the speed control up here where the driver figure should go. That will give the speed control lots of air in order to cool. Because if you jam it down in here, it's going to be wicked hot. Okay. So, when you flip the instructions over, so all that is just information about the speed control. The bottom corner here, it talk about the LED flashing pattern, and that if it's in brushless mode, the LED will flash orange when turned on, and when it's in brush mode, the LED will flash green when it's turned on. So you flip it over to try to figure out how to set the thing up into brushed mode, and you read all of this instructions, um, and all of this stuff either doesn't apply to brushed mode, okay, because this is brushless only, or you finally get down, or this is how to set it up to your, um, your transmitter, you finally get down to the very last paragraph on, the, on all of the instructions, the very last paragraph, and it finally tells you how to set the motor up into brushed mode, which I think is just wrong on their part, that they put the first thing you need to do very last on the instructions, um, but that's how they've done it. So um, that's the information about the speed control. Um, know that if you do plan to use a brushless motor, you will need to purchase this extra sensor cable in addition to the motor, um, in addition to possibly a cooling fan. So the ESC comes um, configured from the factory in brushless mode, which doesn't match your brushed motor. You can tell this by if you just turn it on, the LED will blink orange. That tells you that it's configured to brushless mode. So to switch the mode, you need to turn your ESC off. Um, I'm using a pencil, um, brand new pencil with a nice firm eraser to press on the set button. So you press and hold the set button in, turn the ESC on, it'll light red, green, orange, but I have a hard time telling the difference. There's red, green, orange. So you let the button up, and now we'll alternate between green and orange. So when it's on green, hit the set button. And now the green light will blink. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. When the green light blinks, it tells you that it's prepared to go into brushed mode. And if that's what you want, you press the set button. The light will turn off, and then it will come on and blink, blink at a slower rate. Now it's been configured to brushed mode. Okay, that's it. And um, up next, we're going to cover steps 20 to 25 which is attaching the RC equipment and the steering rods and the servo saver and the wheel assembly and attaching the wheels. Um, so I appreciate you watching. If you uh, like this series, please give it a like. And if I'm uh, messing anything up, because like I said, this is my first time building this car, um, there's some new equipment in it for sure, please leave a comment to let me know.